When the creosote is turning yellow, you know it's hot. The monsoon has kind of failed us. Which means uh, we just get baked. I've been out for two months. I was overworked again. I nearly need to learn how to pace things. I'm going to have most likely to extend the cooling tubes when it's 95. They work when it's 110 and the wind's from the wrong side. case for making a slide door in front of these tubes in order to have the air move slower through the tube when the wind is from the north. Uh, in the end, once the greenhouse is fully up with the second layer of glass, the convection engine should work because the greenhouse is what heats up and this space stays cooler. That creates a natural flow. Right now, we, have, we often have northern winds here. Yeah, I can already feel that the air is warm because of it. And it's also 110, and so I might have to extend these tubes. I don't think, I still don't think that the plastic is worse than the metal. I notice it works pretty good at 95, and towels pretty much 95 to the most extreme temperature that they get there. And otherwise, you can just run them at night. I think they're just for additional cooling. They're not They're not what keeps the house cool. Like They're not the main reason for a cool home. That's the thermal mass and the super insulation. We'll see again when this home is insulated how warm it gets. Got a lot of the roughing done, and I chose not to put in can walls because electri electrical and plumbing is much harder to do. So it's just a concrete beam with rebar and framing, framed up all the inner walls. Electrical's easy like that, just through the walls and the trusses. I chose to insulate with two times R38, and there's R18 on the roof, so we're almost at R100 in this roof here. There's some more insulation. Uh, insulation supply 
is a nice online company where you can buy insulation about 30% cheaper than Home Depot. I chose to use the remainders for the roof insulation on the front wall and this will be stuccoed. Good use of uh, leftover material. It's winter now so the sun's coming in the home deeply and it's not really cold. I'm not concerned with warmth here, more with the heat in summer and cooling the home that will be harder. All the kitchen walls are framed and you use leftover wood between the studs so putting the counters and the cabinets up is easier. These are the utilities. I decided to split them in three. This is the electrical room. I put a lot of wood up there so I could play with the inverter system. And the wood connects to the standing walls. And there's some screws and tires too, but mainly they're connected to the wall. So that gives them a lot of strength and you can literally hang on it. And so you have uh, room for up to three inverters and other stuff if you want to have charge controllers separately. And um, I will probably put a, another panel here to connect um, the inverters to. So you have a panel where the power comes in, so maybe multiple inverters, which connects to the panel where everything goes out. Make sure your wires are a bit longer than the panel, like a foot longer, like st stick them down here because you'll need them at that length, especially uh, for the breakers here below. And if you have a ground bar here, you'll need long wires. And this is a nice way to um, place the wires and write down where, the, where they all go. I use underground cable, UFB for all the number 10s, washer and dryer, and um, the tire wall will also have UFB variable cable. Number 8, 240 for the stove, and the rest is pretty much all yellow uh, number 12 wire. And number 12 is a bit more expensive than um, 14 for 15 amps, but um, I have some pretty long runs in the home and if you don't want to have a big voltage drop you would uh, I would recommend use number 12 everywhere it's also not that much more expensive and gives you more flexibility also later on and it's also not that much harder to um, to wire in the thicker the wire the harder it gets but number 14 and 12 are still pretty easy to do so yeah voltage drop this um, room is to the west of the home and uh, it has to go all the way to the east 60 feet and you do get voltage drop at that length if you have serious uh, loads there the kitchen is probably the hardest thing you will wire most power goes there code requires that you have two groups of outlets each on their own separate 20 amp breaker so I have four outlets over there and three where also the fridge goes over here that's two 20 amp breakers then you'll have a 40 amp breaker or 50 for the stove induction 40 is pretty typical now so why wouldn't you go uh, with that and I have another separate 20 amp breaker for the microwave vent and another one for the dishwasher and then another rule is that you cannot put any lighting on the two kitchen 20 amp breaker groups for the outlets. So the lighting uh, is all connected to that of the living room. The living room will be over there. It's all in the same room. And that's pretty much it for the kitchen. That, those are the rules you need to follow.
Squash Donkey here, right?